What the f is this piece of shit? As time pressures the bot lane, the enemy carries start rotating to hold their base. This is the best moment to catch them off guard. After one glimpse of Samira, I know I have a chance to catch her, yet I immediately change my mind as Huey walks towards me, a safer target. This is the fastest Shaco combo for season 14. Backstep, empowered Profin Hydra active, E to execute. Our team is behind in gold, yet with Baron and one carry out of the game, I make my way top to ensure maximum pressure on the Nexus. As the enemy come top to defend, they leave mid open, losing the inhibitor. I queue defensively, yet as Samira walks towards me, I seize the opportunity. Pause right there. Riot removed the armor and magic resist runes, tremendously buffing the power of lethality items. Plus, she doesn't have plated steel caps. Insane crit. Two carries down. As all enemies focus on me, my team flanks, cornering them. The game is won. Just like that, you can also carry with Shaco. By securing objectives, catching enemy carries off guard, split pushing and creating massive pressure on the enemy base. Cornering them and ultimately distracting and baiting the enemy team in a bad play, resulting in victory. Hi everyone, I'm the clone and welcome to season 14. A season that looks quite promising. Julian. As with the removal of mythic items and addition of new lethality monsters, Shaco has both the utility and power to carry, which is exactly what I'll show you how to do in this video. If you want to support me, don't forget to drop a like and make sure to subscribe for my daily uploads. Also, let me know, what do you think of Shaco in Season 14? The best Shaco start, as always, is an aggressive one. We know Nocturne started at blue, has our AD carry and support in. Classic start. Therefore, after blue and frog, his red is free. Placing a ward here allows our mid laner to follow. Since we have the element of surprise, we've already won the fight. Shaco's backstep E ignite combo is very strong. I place a box to block Zed from running. Easy double. Just like that, we've already gained a massive advantage. Meanwhile, a big disadvantage for Shaco this season is the ability to clear Void Grubs early game. It's best to avoid them, at least until you get Tiamat, which, when built into Profane Hydra, is a great addition to the game, especially as it has lethality, ability haste, and a great active with massive damage that can help one-shot enemies late game. On top of the improved clear speed, it provides with AoE damage against jungle monsters. This will always be your first main item in the current meta. Back to Void Grubs. It is best to use them as bait, as when enemies start fighting them, they become very exposed, resulting in easy fights. Pro tip, in such a fight, keep your Q. Instead, basic attack once or twice, then use Clone. This will give it permanently 2.5 attack speed through Hail of Blades, thus increasing your DPS by an insane amount. Plus, every time your clone attacks, it will slow enemies through E's passive. Now, Q at the end to secure the kill. Then, it's free grabs. Always track enemy paths and predict their moves. Here, the tower is low HP. Therefore, I know there's a chance Varus will go for it. As I only have Hydra, it is impossible to one-shot him. Therefore, you have to maximize the potential of your tools. Also, pro tip, if an enemy is inside the minion wave, to make sure you do not backstab a minion, you can bind the key to attack enemy champions only. Here, after the backstab, I make sure to basic attack as many times as I need before using Hydra and E. Always take advantage of unaware enemies, and only use your execute abilities after they are low HP. Always try to steal enemy buffs when seeing the respawn timer on the minimap. 
This is a very good warding spot as it provides good vision and is rarely checked. As I see Nocturne, I path inside the bush which gives me a free attack and then I immediately use Clone for DPS. Always be confident, as it's very important to never back away in such a situation, because it'll give away which is the real Shaco, especially if they land the lucky ability on you, never panic. As long as you have Q, you're in control. Easy dodge, as I secure both Nocturne and the Red. Near the 20 minutes mark, you can start focusing on split pushing. Here, I use the bash for movement speed and try to close the gap. Even though I fail to get the backstab in time, I never panic. Shaco can easily dodge Zed's ult with Clone. Make sure to cast it as he's placing the mark on you. Split pushing not only creates pressure around the map, it also, most importantly, provides you with a ton more XP and gold compared to farming jungle camps. Again, use the bash for extra movement and terrain to increase Q's range. Also, 1 million IQ pro tip, if you click once on an enemy with an ability or basic attack, the second they get in range of your attack, it will instantly cast, resulting in no reaction time for them. When being chased, a neat Q trick is walk into enemies. This will confuse them. Don't be shy to do so if you have to dodge an ability, especially if there is a wall there you can Q through. First blood. Always jump in fights that have already started. Such opportunistic events are great as the enemy carries will have already used their abilities on your team and are focusing on your front line. Meanwhile, you flank, one shot them and then disengage. This is especially made easier with Opportunity's passive, which gives you a massive movement speed boost after you one shot an enemy. Again, farm waves. One minion is worth like 8 jungle camps for real. I mean, look at how I'm level 15 while everyone is 12 and below. Here is a perfect example of how reliant you are on the new Profane Hydra. Varus is literally 5 levels behind, yet I am unable to one-shot him without the active damage of Profane. Unfortunately, while this item is very strong, you are forced to revolve your engages around its active. A similar issue is present here, as Zed dodges my Hydra with ult, getting away. One saving grace is Bork which, while pretty mandatory still, is very useful, especially as you can solo Baron with it at around mini 20 if you're a bit fed. When starting Baron, always jump on enemies that get too close, since they'll be focusing on what's happening inside the pit, unaware of what's behind them. Now that we have Baron, the most important play to ensure victory is pressuring all lanes. By taking every inhibitor, then using Baron buff, the minions will end the game on their own. A cool way to start fights later into the game, when ahead, is to contest enemy buffs, especially now that the buff applies to your entire team. To secure red, I cast E, then basic attack into smite at the same time. Notice how by the time E connects, my attack and smite goes through, making it impossible for enemies to steal. In prolonged fights, make the enemy feel safe to engage by staying outside their vision. Meanwhile, flank. This wall is perfect for that. Notice though how no backstab equals zero damage. Again, Bork saves my life. By creating pressure, all objectives become free as the enemy team is trapped inside their base. This is a perfect situation where you can engage, sneak past their front line and one shot the carries that are sitting at the back. If you want to be safe, Always run after a one shot, especially since you have ult, it'll be easy to get away. Wait for Q to reset, then jump back in. You can do the opposite and engage like I did here, but if they flash and kite while their front line turns around, you're gonna have a bad time. Regardless, as the minion pressure built up, victory is secured. Next game, what do we do early? That's right, invade. First blood. Focus on overpushed lanes. Keep Q until they flash. Box to zone, basic attack to slow enemies, nice flash. Look at my pathing. With each basic attack, it takes me longer to reach her. Thus, I Q for damage. And. It's a classic moment. 
it is very important to be sure of yourself, know your damage and how much you can stretch to reach for a kill. While stealing, Xin catches me red-handed. I ping my team for help and try to win as much time as possible for them. Always commit your full combo on one person to secure the kill. When my teammates arrive, best they can do is not let me die alone, as they also bite the dust. Teamwork OP Catching the enemy jungler of guard is very strong, especially after they use their whole kit on a jungle monster. Easy kill. Afterwards, focus on the closest objective, in this case, free dragon. This wall is still a very strong position where you can gank from. Always wait until you see the enemies committing to an aggressive path. You can see Blitz baiting. As Seraphine walks to poke him, it's a perfect opportunity. Always push under tower in such a situation as you can easily dive any support left to defend it. Read enemy movement and punish them. Even if they weren't to path through here, I would have lost nothing by using Q. Remember, you miss every opportunity you do not exploit. I start dragon because I can rush it with clone. Always keep an eye on the enemy while farming, or in this case, taking an objective. As I see them starting a fight, I tell my clone to go in the opposite direction in which I jump, resulting in a double fear and wound engagement. Notice how I'm always prioritizing paths through bushes before jumping. <laughs> This is to ensure I have enough movement speed to catch my enemy. As Akshan yolos me, I instantly use clone and confidently 1v1 him. Then queue inside the bush to get away. Many times enemies will ignore the clone, which is a huge mistake as you can use it to both slow them down and chip away at their health. As I rush in, I'm facing away from them as I headbutt the wall, then Q. This makes my intention unpredictable. <laughs> that was too greedy, that was too greedy, bro. Confidence. Just like with Nocturne, never back down from such a situation. If I ran away, I would have died. Then, free objective. This is a fight example where not only you cannot follow, but shouldn't follow to begin with. As we know where their entire team is though, except for Ashkan, we can bait them to an objective. Easy dragon rush. As our team backs away, we are being traced. Notice how even for a split second I seek to break vision from the enemy in order to queue back in to catch their backline as they chase. Unfortunately, Sin is also there. Make sure to avoid words as you jump in. This is the sad state of Shaco's damage when enemies build plated steel caps or any bit of armor as it counters your lethality items completely. It's also why it's best to itemize properly depending on the enemy team comp. Instead of opportunity after Hydra, Bork is better at countering bruisers or tanks, while Rilda's grudge helps if you are against squishy carries with plated steel caps. One quadrillion IQ tip. Riot changed the way Herald works. When you attack it, <coughs> her, my apologies. Excuse me, it's ma'am! While attacking, you can no longer get inside her to spank the eye. But what you can do is ride her. <laughs> By clicking on Herald after it spawns, she gets excited, rushing forward, knocking any enemy up, while doing massive damage to towers. And the actual funny part here is, you can use her to ride out of a tight situation like a boss. <laughs> the best escape of my life, bro. Get your ass out of here, boy. You can also engage with her. Watch this. I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> no, I'm so Or at least bait enemies. Nice flash. Notice, as the fight starts, I fish for their backline. The second Senna gives away her position with ult, I rush for her. Backstab, Hydra's active into E, execute. Ignite and smite are optional, depending on the situation.
Late game, again, one of your biggest priorities is catch and kill enemy carries in order to open objective opportunities for your team. Even though I know Sela and Serafina are inside the bush because of my spidey senses and I'm also actually a cheater, it can be very rewarding to queue in blind to check bushes. The new season introduced many new items that help late game through movement speed buffs. This allows you to queue from far away, reaching their backline. The problem here is clone is on cooldown. Never jump in on more than one enemy without clone, as even with opportunities passive, you'll likely not get away. I see Ashkan and Senna. Thus, just like before with Seraphine in the bush, I blind queue to catch them. But they are not there anymore. At times, you won't catch any enemy. But it doesn't matter as we don't lose anything. Seeing enemies rotate to hold a position is huge, as you can take advantage and intercept popular routes to catch them off guard. Here, I fail, but again, at no cost. Just like last game, pressure side lanes. As I see my team spread bot in mid, they'll keep the enemy team busy. Thus, top is free. While inside the enemy base, your engages are very vulnerable as you can easily be spotted by towers. I carefully wait until my team fully draws the enemy's attention, then engage. I secure two kills and the inhibitor. Know your enemy's power potential. As Seraphine is solo and Irelia is tanking for me, I can easily demolish the two towers uncontested. At this point it's over. Except we all die and then lose the game. By the way, there will be a new builds guide coming soon, so stay tuned. Also, if you guys, again, enjoy my content and want to support me, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe and let me know what your favorite Shaco build is this season. Now that we aren't limited by mythic items anymore. Here's the scoreboard. Two things to take away. Damage and gold. This build can really one-shot in the right matchup. Here's my OP.GG. Thanks a lot for watching, and as always, until next time. Bang! Just like Uncle Ben. Stay safe. <laughs>